let's think about something that we want to predict. Well, for me, I love sleeping. In fact, I love sleeping. I like to get eight or nine hours a night. But unfortunately, my puppy June does not tend to sleep eight or nine hours. So what I'm going to do is try to predict how long June is going to sleep. The first thing I'll do is measure how much she sleeps, let's say over six days, and I'll try to use that to predict how much she's going to sleep on the seventh day. So I'm going to call the days I, and on day one, June slept five hours, and I'm going to call the hours that June sleeps H. So hours June sleeps is defined as H and then I'll do H sub I to indicate which day so this would be H sub 1 on day 2 June slept 3 hours day 3 8 hours day 4 7 hours day 5 5 hours and day 6 eight hours. So first let's go ahead and plot this, which I've already done. La la. And we have day on the x-axis and hours slept on the y-axis. And at first glance it kind of just looks like a random clump. So what's the first thing that we should try to do when predicting something? Well, I always find the average. Average is always a good place to start. So to find the average of h, let's first find the sum. So we can do this in our heads here. So 5 plus 3 is 8, plus 8 is 16, plus 7 would be 23, plus 5 is 28, plus 8 is 36. Okay, 36. And then to calculate the average, we will do sum divided by the number of observations. So for us, um, the number of observations is 6. And 36 divided by 6 will give us a nice even number, 6. It's almost like I knew that these would be nice numbers. Let's go over here and go ahead and plot our average. I'll use a blue marker, so let's take six and draw a line straight across. So, when we learned about variance, and glancing at this, we can see that there is a lot of variance around our mean. It jumps up and down quite a bit. Regardless, let's go ahead and first try to use this average line as our predictor. And on the seventh day, uh, she would sleep six hours using this prediction. Well, again, this looks like a kind of a random clump here, and I would actually argue that this is not a good example to use a linear trend line. You would want a pretty clear positive trend or pretty clear negative trend in order to use a trend line. But for demonstration purposes, let's go ahead and try to draw a trend line that goes through our data here. I'm going to use red. <clears throat> so let's say it goes like this. Okay, this trend line looks pretty good. I guess we have two below and four above. Um, I think it looks okay. And the next step to evaluate our trend line is to, well, we got to find an equation. I don't really know exactly what this value is going to be for our seventh day. Um, just glancing, I don't know, is that about eight? I'm not positive. So let's find the equation for this trend line. There are lots of ways to do this. Uh, I personally like to just find two points on the line to start and then go from there. So this is clearly at four. So the zero four point will be one of the ones I choose. And then, again, I've actually already kind of figured out the line I wanted, but just glancing at this point, it looks like it's pretty clearly a 7. So this point would be day 6, 
hour seven. And now um, I'm gonna switch back to black here. So this is finding the equation of a linear trend line. So we start with two points. So our two points are 0 and 4. And then the other one was 6 and... Oops. There we go. The other one was 6 and 7. And we want to convert this into a y equals mx plus b. b is the y-intercept. That one we've already found. 4. So we already have b equals 4. To find m, or the slope, lots of great ways to do this. I like to think about slope as rise over run. This is just one method. And so for us, what is the rise? So between the two points, the rise goes from, well, it goes from four to seven. So to calculate that rise, oops, it goes from four to seven. To calculate that rise, we'll do seven minus four. And what's the run? That's this direction. So how far are we running? So we're going from zero to six. So to specifically calculate that, I would do six minus zero. So this now gives us three divided by six, which is equal to 0 0.5. So this is our M. And now our equation for this trend line is Y equals 0 0.5 times x plus 4. So that was finding the linear line, sorry, that was finding the equation of a linear trend line. Uh, I will note that there are lots of excellent resources that probably more clearly explain what a trend line is and how to calculate um, the equation for it. So I'll, I'll put a link up here to the Khan Academy videos. Um, and then I'll also put a link down at the description to the Khan Academy videos, which I think do a great job. Thanks.